Hello everyone, my name is Doug Bassett. I'm Senior Technical Instructor here at Stormwind Studios. And I get to teach a lot of really cool classes. And one of my favorites is the AZ-104, which is Microsoft Azure Administrator. In there they have a chapter four, which is all about how networks work inside of Azure. And one of the things that we, we see is that with cloud computing, you can have resources scattered all over the place. I could have resources in California, I could have resources in New York, I could have resources in Perth, you know, they're all over the place. And I want them to be able to communicate as necessary, but we're going to use the, the principle of least privilege, which means I don't want it, just anybody talking to just anybody. There are certain resources that needs to talk to the central web app uh, resource, but I don't want them talking to each other because there's there's no actual need for it. And maybe I'll put a block on there. So um, how do I go through and make it so that if I have stuff in different areas, they can communicate. Well, there's a, a few different ways that we've done historically. One of the ways that we can do this is we can use virtual network connections. With these virtual network connections, I will have, here's my, my virtual network, and I will go in and I will set up a VPN. It has to be a separate subnet, has to be called a gateway, and then you, you go in and you set VPNs. Now, the problem with this is, is that it is going across the internet. Another problem with this is, is it can take 45 minutes for this process to take place. And here's the thing, everything, all the resources I need to hook up, they're all in Azure. So I wanna be able to hook up resources in Azure no matter where they happen to be throughout the world. I wanna limit the communications, but I don't wanna send the stuff over the internet and I don't wanna to have to pay gateway charges and all that because anytime you set up a VPN gateway, you have to pay fees depending upon the size of the traffic. And we go into the great details on that as we go through. Well, Microsoft actually has a solution. It's called VNet Peering. And with VNet Peering, I can go through and I can set up the stuff inside the same region. So if I have one virtual network and another virtual network and they're both in Western US, I can do peering there. However, I am not limited to peering just between stuff in the same region. I can peer between regions. And in fact, I can peer between continents. So if I have something in one location, I want to set up a VPN or a, 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 a virtual network peer over to that other location, and I don't want it to go on the internet, I don't want VPN, I just want it to stay on Microsoft's backbone, I have the ability to do that. So um, there's other advantages as well. It doesn't take 45 minutes. I don't have to pay for uh, gateway fees. Now, if I am going from one region to another, I may have to pay for the data to leave the region, but over that, over and overall, it's uh, it's very very straightforward. So let me go ahead and show you a solution. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following some procedures here. This is the website we use. Uh, we use the actual uh, docs.microsoft.com technical documentation for a lot of our student guide information because this shows you the latest and greatest information. And uh, as they update it, that updates the student guide. But let's go ahead and look at the process. So I have created a resource group called App Farm. And inside the App Farm, we're going to add a bunch of different resources. Now, uh, when you have stuff that's in a resource group, they can communicate with stuff outside the resource group. We're just doing this for management convenience. Now, what you'll be able to see here is that I do have a variety of virtual networks that I've already created. We have the App Farm Hub. The App Farm Hub is the, the virtual network where I am going to be doing my uh, my primary access for people coming into the internet. Now this is a um, this is sort of a Western Pacific type deal. In other words, it's going to be hosted over in Australia. Now I also have some custom apps. This web farm is going to be going through and talking to custom apps. It's going to be going in and grabbing individual elements. It also has to go in and do credit card processing. But each of these are located in Azure up in a different facility. So for example, the custom apps is in the UK South, the PCI is in the Western US, and the North Central uh, US is hosting our web farm element. So the users are gonna come in and they're going to hit the, uh, the app farm hub. So that's where they hit the websites and do all the stuff there. But then this website is gonna be pulling stuff from a variety of locations. So to illustrate this, here we have, here we have the farm. So that's our farm. And we're going to have PCI credit card payment. We're going to have app elements. We're going to have custom applications all hooked in a, a hub and spoke environment. Now, one of the big things is, for example, PCI. 
The only thing that we want to be able to do PCI for is for things like um, being able to have a shopping cart. But I don't want somebody who's doing development up here to be able to traverse and then go into the PCI element. So I want to avoid that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up the hub and spoke, and then we'll talk about how traffic traverses the network. So we're going to go into the hub, and we're going to create a network association between the hub and all of the other elements. So we're going to go down into, now this is the app farm hub, which is the, uh, the network. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to select peering. So where is my peering? Here it is, peerings. And let me get my head out of the way so you can see all this stuff. <laughs> all righty, so you guys want to watch as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add a peering. And you just have to say who it's from and who it's to. We're going to call this app farm hub put an m in there two and we'll send this one to pci app farm pci and if i uh and the cool thing about this peering it, the peering doesn't even have to be with folks that are in your same subscription even in your same company you know they can be somebody completely different and if you have the uh, the uh, resource ID that's enough to be able to identify. The only problem is you got to get the resource ID, and it's like 20 miles long. But I do have the ability since it's all inside of my subscription. I can go in and I can specify what uh, individual network we're looking for. So I am looking for apps form app form PCI in Western US. And now um, now the other thing is because I have the appropriate permissions to go through and create this peering and I have the permissions to be able to create it on both sides, I can create from the App Farm Hub to the PCI and from the PCI to the App Farm Hub all at the exact same time. So we're going to call this one uh, App Farm PCI to App Farm Hub. Just like that. And what did I put a space in the beginning there? Nope. Oh, you can't have spaces. None of that stuff. All right. Now you'll notice that it says, do I allow virtual network access from App Farm Hub to PCI? So I'm saying, can I allow uh, elements that are in the App Farm Hub to go out to PCI? And we're going to go ahead and enable that. Now we're also going to enable the other side where it says, can PCI then come in and communicate? with App Farm Hub. And by default, both of those are going to be enabled. Um, you also can say, well, do I want to forward traffic? And this is where we get into the security. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it's disabled. So if traffic flows in to Farm PCI from some other network, maybe they have another peering or something like that, do I want that traffic to be able to traverse through that and then go in and hit the App Farm Hub? And I'm going to say no. Well, what about the other way? What if somebody's hooked to App Farm Hub, and that's what we're doing is we're hooking a bunch of stuff to App Farm Hub, the uh, the elements, the custom app, and all that stuff. Do I want that to be able to go through and be routed all the way to PCI? And the definite answer on that one is no. And we'll talk about gateway transport settings in just a moment. So I'll say okay, and it'll go in and it'll start to create that. Now, unlike the uh, the other uh, you know v, uh, uh, VPN peering, it doesn't take 45 seconds. It just takes a few moments. So we'll see if it comes in and then boom, it's done. And it's getting updating, which means that it's establishing it on both sides. And then if I go in and I wait, it'll eventually show up. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make some, oh, there it is. It's all done. So we refresh it. And if it says initiating, it means one side's done, the other one isn't. If it says connected, we have connectivity to both sides. So I've just essentially hooked the, uh, the uh, app farm network. We'll go back into my resource groups here. I have the hub and the hub, which is in, let me get my head out of the way. The hub, which is in Australia, is now connected to PCI, which is in Western US. So now what I want to do is, is I want to add another peering. We're going to go ahead and add the web elements. So go down into peerings. And I'm always jumping past it. Here's peerings. We'll go ahead and say add. And we're going to do this out to web elements. So let me go ahead and grab the virtual network so I can remember what the heck I called it. Um, here is the elements. And that's in, uh, looks like a northern. So we'll say that this is app farm to app, app farm hub to app farm elements. 
<coughs> excuse me. And then we're going to do it the other way. We'll say app farm elements to app farm hub. And again, we're going to disable the traffic and disable the forwarding. And so it'll go through and it'll create it. And now what I have done is I have created two legs of my triangle. So I've gone in using the, uh, the appropriate procedures. I've gone in, I've set up at app farm hub, I've set up PCI, and I've also set up the web elements. And because I said don't forward traffic, if this decides to originate information, we'll say that this is a 10.1, this is 10.2, and this is 10.3. If this decides to try and forward data to something in 10.2 here, because we've said don't allow that data to be forwarded, go ahead and, and knock it out. And it'll, it'll completely block it. So that makes it so that without having to go through and set up something like a network security group or setting up uh, access control lists on routers and blah, 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 blah. Just because I was able to set up the peering here, these are gonna be able to communicate. And with the peering here, these are gonna be able to communicate, but we don't have to worry about transitive stuff. Now, the third option that we had, if we went in and looked at this again, the third element that we have is whether or not we wanna be able to allow gateways. Now, this is a gateway transit setting, and essentially what it means is, is I don't have a gateway in my local network, can I use yours? So it's, it's sort of like if you VPN at home to the office and it'll say, well, do I wanna send, if I go to Facebook, do I wanna send it from my machine or do I wanna send it down the VPN tunnel and then have it go out via the, uh, the corporate connection? So that's an option that we have there. Now we do have a link that goes through and talks about this. So this is a VPN gateway transit and I wanna show you what this actually looks like. So this is, uh, and again, we rely heavily on the um, on the documentation from Microsoft because it gets updated all the all the time. This was updated 9 to 2020. But see, we have this virtual network, this virtual network, and then we have the hub network. You see a lot of hub and spoke stuff. Now, in order for us to be able to use the remote gateway, we can't have our own gateway. So we don't have any gateway here. But maybe this has a VPN connection, and this VPN connection goes to on-premise, you know, something like that. Or maybe we do have VPN connections to other networks or to uh, possibly individual clients. So instead of having to make your own VPN connections here, I can say I want to be able to use the remote gateway, and now I can go through the hub and then the gateway out. So if I go down, this is what it looks like. You just say yes. I want to enable it. Do I want to allow forwarded traffic, which is what we've turned off that says, no, I don't want one network to be able to talk to another network. Do we allow gateway transit, which means am I going to allow stuff to go through my gateway, but I'm one of those satellite sites. I'm one of the, 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 the spoke sites as opposed to the hub site. And so I would say remove or use the remote gateway, which is just like we're doing here. We're saying, hey, I'm in Spokane Cla or Spoke Classic and I am going to use this uh, Azure VPN as my, my gateway out, but we're still not initiating communications. So the whole idea behind going through and setting all this stuff up is to allow us to have a solution that can have satellite components that can be located pretty much anywhere in the world and allow me to grab those elements, use those resources in there, but it allows me to have that isolation so that I don't worry about somebody using the, uh, oh, I'm a web developer, but hey, I can get into the credit card processing system. Nope, sorry, you can't. And that's really one of the big advantages of PCI uh, processing and secure processing with like SQL Server, stuff like that, is because you can have great control over who can communicate with whom, and you don't necessarily have to go through and jump through a lot of hoops. If you do have any questions, feel free and email me, doug.bassett at stormwindlive.com. Uh, and on behalf of everybody here at Stormwind, thanks for coming by, and we hope to see you in a class real soon.